Okay, everybody, thank you for showing up at the uh, 20th anniversary of the United Way tournament. I started way back in 2005, was the first one. Um, we have a few things here we want to talk about, but first we've got to thank our sponsors. As always, in this whole time, the event sponsorship belongs to Channel Lock, and we can't say thank you enough for Channel Lock. Uh, our largemouth sponsors, Armstrong Cable, Community Chevrolet, Meadville Medical Center, RLG Construction Consulting, Bayshore Homes, Northwest Rural Electric, Accutech Precision, Ernst Seeds, Meadville Forage, MN Axe in the movies, Penco Toll and Die, Airy Bank, VFW Post 2006, and Palmero Toyota. So there's been a lot of talk, and there's one big word in tournament bass fishing, and that's technology. Um, the new technology in profession, not just professional bass fishing, even local bass fishing, is forward-facing sonar. And there's, it's probably the biggest debate in outdoor sporting since I've been alive. It beats anything where it's the crossbow versus compound bow argument, or which deer rifle is the best rifle. Everybody has a different opinion. This forward-facing sonar, there's a lot of guys that want to have it banned. And some tournament organizations are considering banning forward-facing sonar. So what it basically is, is everybody's familiar with sonar. Does anybody know what sonar stands for? It's an acronym. Anybody? Okay, well, that's how you identify it. It stands for sonar navigation and ranging. And what it is, is there's basically a transducer that both sends a sound signal and listens for the echo of the sound signal when it bounces off of something underwater and it hears that echo and it can calculate what distance that object that the sound bounced off of is from the transducer. Well, sonar has been around since I guess almost World War II. It's no big deal, but through technology and advancements and computerization, they now have something called forward-facing sonar, which actually gives a live signal in real time of what's actually going on in front of the boat underwater. So if you can imagine almost like a sonar video camera on your boat that looks underwater. So it doesn't give the same kind of an image as an actual video camera, but you actually get live imaging. You can actually see fish swimming around in front of the boat. You can't tell where the fish are. There's big fish, small fish, it could be perch, it could be bass, it could be a walleye. But what it does, it gives these guys an idea of exactly what's out in front of their boat. And then they can, they mount them on their trolling motors, the transducer, and then they could pan around and look around to their left, to their right, even behind them and see what's going on under the water. The rocks show up, the weeds show up. It's almost too good of a technology. It's been around for a couple of years, and it's, it's really, this year I think everything's kind of come to a head with the whole forward-facing sonar thing, because it's the integration and application of all the technologies that are out there. So we have the electric trolling motors, we have GPS, we have the sonar, we have the forward-facing sonar now, and of course the mapping that goes along with all this, and it's really got to the point where some guys are arguing that the skill is being taken out of angling and it's becoming more of a video game type of thing. So to the older fishermen like maybe myself or Wade Adams or some of the guys, they don't like it because you know, it doesn't take, boy the younger generation is going to not like this, it doesn't take as much skill to catch fish as it used to. And a lot of the skills that maybe the older fishermen learned through years of practice and experimentation that learning curve is taken down to minutes. Truly, it does. And, it's, it's the, and just like cursive, right? The younger generation, it's like a foreign language to them. But the older people, we can read cursive just fine. The younger generation, not so much so. And, you know, same thing with the older generation. Maybe we have some problems with electronics where the younger generation doesn't have problems with their electronics, whether it comes to programming, the VCR, well, CD player or DVR or whatever it is, right? They don't have any problem with that, or the older people do. So. It's kind of when you've integrated in this last year where now you have the sonar with the spot lock trolling motors and 
I don't know if you all know, but like the trolling motors, a lot of these guys now use GPS. And it can actually keep the boat in an exact specific position, irregardless of current, wind, wave action. They could press a spot lock and that will keep that boat glued to an exact spot. Therefore, taking some of the work, effort, and skill required to do boat positioning, which was always a very important aspect or skill needed for professional fishing or for tournament fishing. And it's pretty much taken it to the point where these guys can stay exactly in a spot or they could pick a landmark 100 yards away and point the trolling motor in that direction and it takes them right to that spot irregardless of waves, wind, current, or anything. So it takes some of that skills out of fishing and just lets the guys focus on, I guess, fishing instead of these other things, which is good and bad. So by the time you take this spot lock trolling motor with its ability to go exactly where you want it to go and hold exactly where you want it to hold, and then having the ability to look under the water and actually see the fish when they're swimming in the lake kind of makes it almost like an unfair advantage for the fishermen, I guess, to the older generation. We call it an unfair advantage to the younger generation. It's just another tool to use. So that has created a lot of controversy in tournament fishing in the last year or so. And, you know, some organizations are still weighing what they're going to do with that. It's something here at the United Way that the tournament director kind of was undecided whether he was going to allow the forward-facing sonar, but what we've decided to do is allow the forward-facing sonar to be used, but we would have to offer the amateur partner to come up front to fish with the pro angler if they were going to use forward-facing sonar specifically to target fish. And why that's important is because out on Conneaut Lake, most of the fish are around the docks and around the weeds. But there's a special population of fish that live in the open water, not related to docks, not related to weeds. And you could be out in 40 feet of water in the middle of the lake out there, and there's a smallmouth bass sitting 10 feet down in the middle of the lake right now, I guarantee it. And for the last thousands of years that Conneaut Lake has been there, that smallmouth bass has never been able to be fished for because there was no way to know that that fish was out there. But now, forward-facing sonar can literally show you that fish. And there's guys out there that are going to do nothing more than look for these open water fish. When they see one on their sonar, they cast to it. Make a couple casts, it doesn't bite, they move on to the next spot or find the next fish. The problem is if you're the guy in the back of the boat, you never get a chance to see those fish or fish for those fish. In local team tournaments, you have both guys on the boat, it's not a big deal, but it is an issue when you have maybe a pro and an amateur fishing and the amateur is supposed to be in the back of the boat, they don't get an opportunity to catch fish. So, and, and I, the technology has got to the point where I don't want to make the prediction yet, but I guarantee that almost no tor United Way tournament will almost never be won without having forward facing sonar. There is no tournament that is won anymore without an electric trolling motor. There is no tournament that is won anymore without GPS on board. The reason, as you could argue, is that well, everybody has them, that's why no tournament is won without it. Well, everybody has it because you can't win without it. And the same thing is going to come true with forward-facing sonar. It's inevitable. Every tournament, if you don't have it, you can't win. And I'll just give it a personal example. I was in a tournament. If some of you all don't know, one of the guys competing today, Ben Lippiets, is a partner of mine. We fished a lot of local tournaments together. We had a tournament on Pyman Tuning Lake in the end of April. We pull up to our first spot. Our trolling motor cable breaks and our trolling motor cable is inoperable. We spent several hundred dollars to get into the tournament. And before we ever make a cast, we dropped out of the tournament. Because we knew without that piece of equipment, we had no chance to win. We probably had a 40% chance to win the tournament and a 90% chance to cast a check in that tournament with that trolling motor. And history just dictates that through years of experience. But without it, it dropped to 0% chance to win. That's how much guys depend on their electronics and the technology in their boats. Now, we had another reason. There was another tournament on Pima Tuning Lake later that the next day, and we didn't want to take the chance of ruining some of our fishing spots, desperately trying to drift over them to catch some fish if we weren't going to win the tournament. 
So he thought it was better not to fish at all, drop out of the tournament, come back the next day, get the trolling motor fixed, and try again. And we did, and we came in second place. I lost the fish that would have won the tournament. But the point is, is these electronics have become so important to what these guys do that it's not worth fishing without them. And that's just crazy. That's not what fishing is supposed to be. And it's crazy expensive to get an entry level forward facing sonar cost about four thousand dollars and i doubt you're going to get into it for four grand by the time you add the extra battery you need and all these guys are doing the lithium batteries so there's a four thousand dollar piece of equipment you need to purchase just to be competitive um on some of the small lakes like climate tuning these guys have this electronic equipment on their boat the cost of the electronics on their boats cost more than the actual boat and, and I would venture that most of the guys out here fishing today have between ten and fifteen thousand dollars worth of electronics just on their boat, and I'm sure some guys even have more. That's that's not by any means a stretch to think that there's that much money invested just in the electronics in the sonar units on these guys' boats. It's technology has kind of taken over fishing, and I guess you got to guys have to decide whether they want to still do that or they don't. Um, so what I, I gotta switch gears here for a minute because I do have a few more of these little notepads from the United Way. They have numbers. If anybody hasn't got one of these notepads with a number on them, I'm gonna pass some of these out because they might be valuable for prizes. I think I saw y'all walk up and you didn't get any of these notepads. With, so everybody take one there. They, they'll have a purpose later and I have one left. Anybody? Oh, there we go. Okay, well. Okay, so as you know, they all have a purpose later and it has to deal with different things that happen throughout the tournament. So, anyways, back to our discussion on the sonar. It's been a big discussion um, regarding, you know, their use and the application in the tournament circuits. Um, right now they're still active and we don't know how that's going to, if that's going to continue going forward or not, but we have a lot of businesses involved that make a lot of money off these products, so I don't think it's ever going to disappear. So I think we're going to be coming close to weighing in here shortly. I just want to mention that, you know, if anybody has an interest in learning more about fishing, I'm going to do a, um, a little bit of a plug for a, a good friend of mine by the name of Frank Scala. She has a web podcast. It's called Bass Talk Live. And it's day four with Frank Scalish. He's a professional fisherman. He works for Pradco Lures, and he's just a, a brilliant fishing mind. If anybody's interested in uh, learning more about fishing, just tune into his podcast. He has some great information. Uh, did somebody call for me? No? Okay. So it's just a great place to pick up some extra information. Um, like I said, Frank's a good friend. I came out with him in May, and we fished Conneaut Lake here, and we had a really great day. Caught some really big bass, and I think we're going to see a lot of big bass today. This is kind of a unique situation for me because most, most years, or all years, I tend to go out in a pontoon boat with the United Way. We visit with the anglers. We talk about how their day is going, and I have some clue of what's going out on the water, and I could give you guys some insight on what's going on. This year, I had some family come in, and so I didn't get out on the pontoon in time to see what the guys were doing. So I'm just as blind as you are to what's going on, what it's going to look like today. When I came in, some of the people at the United Way wanted to tell me what was going on. I was like, I don't want to know. I want to be surprised. Like every year, I always know kind of what's going on. This year, I'm going to be as surprised as you all to see uh, what the results of this tournament is going to be like. But I will tell you that there's been some tournaments the last couple of weeks where the weights have been really, really big. I mean, best ever kind of weights. So I have a feeling it's going to be a really, really impressive weigh, and we're going to see a lot of fish weighed in. I think some big largemouth. If, if there's any correlation between some of the previous tournaments that have occurred earlier this year, we're probably going to see a record weight be weighed in. I think the record is somewhere just over 24 pounds, 25 pounds, and I really think that that record can be broken today if it continues. I mean, we, we had a tournament here maybe three weeks ago where 
a six fish limit weighed 28 pounds to win. Now we have an eight fish limit, and I don't think we've ever had 26 pounds with an eight fish limit. So there's a good chance that we're gonna see a record fall today. Um, I know some of the guys that usually do good, they all have forward facing sonar now. Corey McClellan that won last year, I know he had forward facing sonar and he kinda convinced me to go out and get it for myself after he gave me a quick demo out on the lake two years ago. Um, I know Ben Lippiatz has it and some of these other guys have forward facing sonar so it's gonna be interesting to see how they do today. Um, I know Corey had posted on Facebook some pictures of some really big bass he had caught earlier in the week so I'm sure that may continue. Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. I think we have a few things to take care of. We're gonna be back here. Wade, what time are these guys gonna start weighing in? As soon as Robbie gets here. As soon as Robbie gets here. Okay. So I'm gonna plug my ears. You could tell the crowd, but you kinda of saw it today, because I wanna be surprised. So what did what did you see out there when you went in the pontoon boat today? Well, uh, there was a lot of fish being caught and we actually witnessed uh, Eric Marsh actually pulled a real nice one out from underneath the dock and uh, saw, saw several, of, several other guys landing fish while we were going around, which was more uh, not, in, not the norm that we've done with our pontoon rides in the past. You know. Yeah, our pontoon rides have been kind of um, uneventful, and a lot of times these guys are poker players too. A lot of times they don't say exactly what they're catching or how big their fish are, but we don't see a lot of fish caught, but you said that was different. Yeah, they, they said the bite was really happening early, and then when the sun popped out, it got a little bit slower. But uh, it sounds to me like some of these guys did pretty well. Good. So I, don't, I really don't know who those guys are going to be. I, did, I asked. I don't want to know names. I just want to be surprised when I come through. So, uh, so it's going to be exciting, and obviously it's always better to catch fish whenever, um, whenever you're out fishing. Hey, we were talking about forward-facing sonar. Did you see any of these guys out there today using that? As a matter of fact, yes, uh, we pulled up close to a guy. They took some uh, water from us, and as we pulled away, he kept telling me to go to the left because he was look, actually looking at the fish at the time when we pulled away. So, so really what was going on is he's fishing, looking at his forward-facing sonar. It's like a little screen in front of him, and you're up bringing snacks, and he doesn't want you to go over here because he could literally see the fish underwater on his sonar out in front of his boat, and he could tell him, hey, go over there so you don't spook my fish away. All right, that's, now, to me, that's right. What do, what, what do, how do you come down on this? Do you like it, not like it? What do you think? You and I have to already talk. You know where I stand. It's just like they don't have to work to learn those spots or learn where they're at. Uh, it used to take a lot of time out there to learn what, you, what, we've, what I've known for the past 20 years plus. Uh, but now a guy can take this forward-looking sonar and, and actually scan a spot over and see if he wants to fish there or not. I mean, if there's nothing there, why waste your time? Exactly, and, that, and that's one of the benefits. Like we were just talking about, hey, you could see fish here, you could see fish there, but sometimes the most important thing is when you don't see fish there because why are you going to fish where there's no fish, right? So, so sometimes the value isn't in what you see but what you don't see. Right, because the more time you could spend where there's fish, the better things can happen. So in, in my own personal experience, that's one of the things where I most like the best. You could pull up on an area, you could scan around with a forward-facing sonar. If there's nothing of if there's nothing looking like it's there, there's no bait fish in the water, you can't tell that it's a bass or a walleye or perch. But if you don't see any bait fish, it's almost not worth going there, so you know to pick up the trolling motor, head on to the next spot, and it just increases the opportunities for good things to happen. So, uh, real quick question. We're talking about this sonar all the time. Maybe some of the bass guys that are sitting here know this, maybe not. I like all the technical stuff. I'm a little bit of a tech geek, so I like the electronics. Does anybody know how fast a sonar wave travels underwater? I just found this fascinating when I was doing a little bit of research on this. It travels 3,200 miles an hour. Now it's just a sound wave, but sound travels faster underwater than it does through the air, but I didn't think it would travel anywhere near that fast. It was just kind of staggering to think that it travels that fast, and 
And the sound wave doesn't sound like anything that, if anybody's watched Red October or any of these Hollywood movies, and you hear the, the deep echo sound of a sonar, it, does, it sounds more like just a click, like a quick, rapid click, 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 click. And when, back in the older days, when Don or myself or Wade were fishing, our sonars were just maybe doing 12 to 18 of those clicks a second to paint a series of still pictures. But nowadays, those sonars are shooting out so many sound waves so rapidly, it's literally, like I said, producing a live image of the bottom. Mr. Dick, I know you were fishing today. Do you have forward-facing sonar yet? Yes, you do. Does anybody not? Come on up here for a second, Don. If he, so you're gonna be helping doing the weigh in here, are you not? No, okay. So we got Don, you fished the top. How did it go for you today? I got a limit. Got a limit, any good ones? Okay. So what's your thought on this whole forward facing sonar issue? I love it. I don't think I could do without it, no. I got it on both my boats. Okay, so see, like there's a lot of guys, I'm sure you've had conversations with some of these guys. Some say that they don't like it, it should be banned. You have other guys, right? You're familiar with the whole conversation. So, but you're on the yes side of it, right? I don't think it's that great that it needs to be banned. I mean, I see fish. Doesn't mean you're going to catch them. Right. You know, I seen fish today and they were very finicky. You know, we had to beat up on them a little bit to get them to bite, you know. Right. Right. So it's, it's kind of like the debate of which rifle is the best hunting rifle. It's not that the rifle is bad. It's just, is it good? Is it bad? Should they, should you have a crossbow for hunting in archery season? Should it just be a compound bow? It's, but it's been a conversation that a lot of guys, you hear it in the background, you talk to these guys in person and there's been a lot of debate. It's just, it's, it's fascinating technology. If you guys haven't really seen it, just pull up a YouTube video. It's, it's definitely revolutionary to the game of, to the game of tournament fishing. And we have Eric Marsh here. Eric, are we going to get things started here shortly? Yep. So how was it out there today? It was good for us. We, we caught a lot of fish. I, I lost some fish uh, I'm sick about, but uh, we did good. We did good, and I talked to a few other guys. They, they're catching them too, so I think you're going to have a good way in. Okay, so Eric, I don't know. Do, do you have forward-facing center on your boat? I, I do. I, just, I, I got it last year. I just started using it. I saw a fish on it yesterday. I tried to catch it. It came after the bait, but it missed it. Uh, I'm in favor of it. Where I see it as an issue is like, I'm in PA Bass Federation, where you have an angler and a co-angler. You're not fishing as a team, you're fishing separately. So that guy in the back of the boat, he could be uh, left out in the, in, hanging out there. So they're gonna have to deal with that somehow. Right, we talked about that even with our discussion, whether we were gonna, the issue with that, with our amateur anglers, whether to bring them to the front of the boat and have them. And, 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 and Eric made a good point here. He, you got it last year, but one of the issues is the application of the technology is really, the guys are really starting to mature their use of it. And the first year or two when guys had it, yeah, you played around with it, but now guys are really getting in tune with how to utilize the technology. And I mean, realistically, I don't. Are there going to be any more United Way tournaments won without it? Don't know. We'll see if they get one today. <laughs> I mean, right? Corey had it last year. He won. He may have been the first guy to win a United Way with a forward-facing sonar. Um, but I, I don't know if it's ever going to happen again. Hard to say. We'll see. Right. I mean, I know we have a couple guys that like to fish really shallow and around the docks and. In that case, <laughs> Robbie Getter, one of the infamous dock fishermen on Conneaut Lake, just rolled by. Um, a lot, a lot of the shallow water guys, the application for forward-facing sonar isn't as relevant when you're only fishing in two, three feet of water, or fishing around the boat docks and some other shallow areas. It doesn't have the same impact as it does to the guys, say, fishing five feet of water or deeper. Um, personally, like I, I don't use it much unless unless I'm fishing in water five feet deep. Otherwise. The clutter of the bottom kind of causes a lot of interference with the sonar. So again, it's not a video image, it's more of a sonar image, so you're trying to interpret visually a lot of data that comes back is just different dots and blobs and things moving under the water. So, uh, yes sir. Okay, the, uh, Eric just mentioned, fishermen, you're more than welcome to uh, 
get your bags and we're going to open up the scales to weigh in. So let's get that part of the tournament day started here. Okay, and again, we already had our one drawing, and I don't see Jim around here yet. We're going to have to let him know that he won his tool pack. Okay, so I want to explain the process. I know most of you guys, there's a lot of familiar faces here. But the guys, they keep the fish alive in their bass boats. Then they get our weigh bags. These are special bags that are waterproof type bags. They'll fill the bags with water, carry the fish in the bags to the tank which is iced down and aerated to keep the fish cool and oxygenated. We will transfer the fish into this tank. The, the tournament team will weigh the fish. They'll measure the fish, make sure they're legal, make sure they're alive. They'll weigh the fish here. It'll read out on the digital scales over here. And then the team with the heaviest limit of eight fish will win. Although last year it did not take a limit. The first time ever in the United Way tournament where the winning bag of fish did not have a limit. Corey won with seven fish and it's an eight fish limit. Right, it was a big, he had big fish, he just didn't have a limit of fish. So usually, almost every year, it has always, it has always taken a limit to catch a fish to win the tournament. Last year was a first. Was that because of forward facing sonar? I don't know. Pardon me? Okay guys, so we're gonna get ready to go. So what's gonna happen is Wade, when he's bringing the fish into the tank, he'll let us know how many largemouth and smallmouth there are. Both largemouth and smallmouth bass can be weighed. There are white bass in Conneaut Lake. They're not part of the same species of, of fish and they're not eligible to be weighed in the tournament. Only the smallmouth bass and largemouth bass can be weighed. So we'll find, we'll see some of both. The largemouth bass are more green with white bellies where the smallmouth bass are more of a brown or bronze with maybe a more tan type of a belly. Sometimes the smallmouth can almost be black depending on where they were spending their time and where they were feeding on. So these guys will catch their fish. Most of these guys like to fish the weed edges. They'll use small plastic baits around the lake and they'll fish the weed edges. And they'll usually catch largemouth bass around the weeds. Under the docks, they'll catch a lot of the largemouth bass also. The smallmouth bass, there's a lot of humps out here and rocky deep break lines. That's where you're going to find the smallmouth bass. And that special population of bass, like I say, hang out in the middle of the lake. Those are usually smallmouth bass. They'll just be open water, chase goals of shadow. There'll be, oh, we have our first team that weigh in. So what boat number is this? Boat number 13. Boat number 13, I believe. Okay, let's see what... Boat, boat number 13 is usually a pretty lucky boat number. Eight largemouth. Eight largemouth, okay. And we're gonna see what we have. Eight largemouth. How'd it go today? Boat number, the first team to weigh in? Yeah, uh, it went, it was a frustrating morning. Uh, couldn't really get going what we wanted to get going, but junk fished our way to, to a limit and then did a little upgrading throughout the day, so. Well, you're going to be leading the stuff. 383 for a lunker. They're all largemouth. Eight fish. Hey, anglers, also make sure to, to get your weigh slips after, after you weigh in your fish. So who has number 13? Number 13 on the notepad that I passed around. Nobody has it. I know it's all there somewhere. Oh, okay. Come on down here. We'll get you a little prize. Okay, we're going to give you two United Way shirts. Oh, you keep that too. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. Boat number. Boat number? Oh, this is still Billy? Okay, Billy Hines, boat number 13. Seventeen point six eight pounds. You guys are winning right now. We'll see if that's going to hold. It's funny you say you struggled today. We heard that a lot of guys start off really well. So did you change anything? Uh, yeah, we changed up a little bit. I mean, I kind of, anytime I'm on this lake, I kind of go into it knowing that this lake fishes better throughout the day, at least for me. So as the as the day goes on, I usually seem to catch more fish and bigger fish. So just kind of cut their head down and grind it away. Give a quick plug. Uh, make sure you guys check out Fish USA. Uh, we're we're definitely a, a player in the bass space now, and 
We have uh, plenty of stuff for all fresh, all freshwater fishing, and definitely check out our uh, our flagship bass rods. The Chris, who I had with me today, he picked up one of those flagship rods, and he was pretty blown away. So that seems to be the uh, the response from most people. All right, sounds good. Thank you very much. Okay, we're moving on here with boat number. Twenty-one. Boat number twenty-one. All largemouth. All largemouth. Cody and John. Whoa, four six four. Well done. That is. Gonna be a, that's going to be a tough, that might hold as a lunker today. All hey, large mouth? Yeah, really nice limit. Wow, really nice. Hey, you want to give a little insight on how this went down for you today? Uh, so the morning was real good. We had a really good morning bite. And uh, I think we were calling at like 7.54, uh, so in the first hour. And then we were just slowly upgrading throughout the whole day. Um, tried to get the small mouth to play and lost one big one. Caught some two-pounders, but that was it. It's a very, very oh, nice bag. I, I, I had said that we, we might, we might see a record today, and today might, this might already be the record. I, it was 24, 25 pounds is the record for the largest bag, and this is going to be close. 25.83 pounds on eight fish, and I'm pretty sure I'm not. I think Ben Lipiets has the record. That's going to be pretty darn hard to beat. But these guys. They didn't put any drama into us. They just came right out and just started to beat on everybody. Excellent. Well done job. Good job, guys. Excellent job. <coughs> They're all large mouth. Well, that could be either make for an interesting rest of the way or a really boring way, and I don't know which way to think about this. Boat number 27, Gus Glasgow, Bill B. Cherry. Gus, did it go as good for you? Not quite. We're just waiting to lunker today. Uh, practice was unbelievable. We came up on Monday, and I had – it would have – 25 27 pounds somewhere on monday and that's bouncing from spot to spot to spot everything we did worked today everything we did monday didn't work oh that's kind of tough okay so he's going to weigh one one small moth lunker okay was it an open water forward facing sun or small moth most of the day yeah Oh, that is a nice smallmouth. Okay. It's not going to beat the 4.6, but it might be the biggest smallmouth. Okay. 3.97. That's very nice smallmouth. Okay, Cody, we're going to need you and your partner to come back up here and hit on, sit on the hot seat. We have a hot seat here where the uh, current leaders normally sit, right underneath the scale, so they can see if their lead is still intact or not. Cody, John, we need you guys up here. Uh, okay, and who do we have now? Boat 24. Boat 24, Hunter Bruner, Bill Dross. Eight, okay. Eight large mouth. Eight large mouth. That's a pretty healthy looking bag there, too. I don't think it's going to be a threat. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Oh, yeah, they have a couple little ones in there. I, I didn't think my prediction for breaking the tournament record was going to hold. When do you girls want to see with a, with a record for the largest bag ever in the United Way? Anybody have that information? I normally know this stuff. I must be slipping, I guess. Yeah, 20, 2583. 2461. So that is a new record. Okay. This one, 14.40 pounds. Okay, boat number seven. Okay, so you guys already, not only are the lead, we have the record for the heaviest bag ever weighed in a United Way tournament. That's pretty stout. Boat number seven. Seven. You're supposed to wait till later and build some drama. Come on. Boat number seven. Oh, okay. <laughs> boat number seven. Boat number seven. Tom Rizzo, Nikki Hindle. How's it going, Tom? Well, how are you doing today? Great, an awesome day to be out fishing. Uh, how'd the fishing go? It was good. I get to fish with my daughter, and um, we caught them all day. Good. And uh, so it was a good day. Pretty decent looking bag, but still. Whoa, lunker? that's a big large mouth. Whoa, look at that one, folks. I think that's that has, that's gonna be close to the four six four mark. No, three nine three, not uh, quite. Do you have all large mouth? mouth? All large mouth. Okay. Eight fish. Yep. I think everybody's going to have eight fish today. The way this is looking. Huh. 
that's a really healthy bag. Oh, there's a little one there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, man, that's looking pretty good. It's a good bag. That's a very good bag. <clears throat> Most years, you'd be right there. Yeah. With, yeah. 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 Whew. 18.20 pounds. Well done. Excellent job. Very good. Very good. Well done. Okay, so that's the father and daughter team. Now, who's, who has number seven? Who has number seven on their notepad? Where to go? Okay, come on up here. We'll get you a prize or two. Give you a shirt, a hat. Boat number seven to the father and daughter team. That's pretty darn good. So there you go. You're welcome. Okay, boat, boat number 28. Nolan and Hunter. Kind of a late addition here. To the term, yeah. So tell me how that happened. Uh, last night around 7 p.m., uh, I got a call from Eric, said we need one more, and uh, so here I am. Okay, did you get out and practice much at all? No. I, no. I haven't made a cash here in about three years. So. <laughs> well, you have a limit. Yeah. So then that's a win right there. Yeah, okay, all good. Large all large mouth. We had one pro that had a um, motor problems or boat problems, and he had to drop out of the tournament, so we had a quick fill in here. And that looks like not too bad, not too bad. And you're fishing, I think. Yes, I am. Excellent. Forward facing sonar? No, actually, uh, fish shallow all day, so I don't get to do that often. I live on Lake Erie, so I was pumped to come here and fish some docks. Right, it is something that it's nice sometimes to do that a little different. Okay, 13 point. 13.99 pounds. Hey, good job on a short notice coming in and a, a solid limit anyhow, if nothing else. All right, thank you. Okay, who do we have coming up next? Boat 16, okay. Vince and Justin. Didn't recognize you some of the shave going on there, man. <laughs> okay, how'd it go for you guys? It was a good day, we had a lot of fun. Uh, Good day with Vince. Great guy. Uh, a good, good fisherman. Yeah. Well, well yeah. good. Okay. Vince, you're supposed to be on this side, buddy. But you got a limit there. All large mouth. Yes. yes. How'd you guys fish today? A little deep, like 13, 15. 308 for lunker. An hour, but a limit in an hour. What were you What were you doing today? What baits were you using? If you don't mind saying. Just drop shot. Drop shot. So your small baits along the weed edges. Okay. So it's an eight fish limit. 308 yeah. was lunker. 308 was lunker. Yeah, you don't have any other big ones to go with it, no. No. Nope. Some days, some days it's like that. Okay. 13.54 pounds. Okay, you guys still doing good. So what do you think your chances to win this thing? I don't know. I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, pretty excited about it. Well, I that's gonna be tough to beat, man. I'm impressed. That's a very good job. Yeah. yeah, excellent, excellent. We'll see what we got going on. Boat number eight, Nick Mueller, Sutton Tresiak. Sorry if I butchered that, Sutton. So Nick, how'd it go for you today? It was fun. It was fun, so. <laughs> um, maybe I'm not picking up on the sarcasm, but looking there, I understand what you're saying. You have some that aren't gonna be that great, okay. He's fishing for Community Chevrolet here. He's an excellent, excellent fisherman. Spends a lot of... Three, five, nine for Lunker. Good Lunker. Spends a lot of time fishing up on Lake Erie. Um, had success in some tournaments there earlier in the year. Oh, there's a solid one. Some good ones, some not so good yeah. ones. Had a split bag. Four good ones and four that were just couldn't get rid of. All large muff? Yeah. Good. Uh, oh really okay good job Sutton okay still gonna be fairly solid bag 14.52 pounds yeah, well done well done well done thank you okay what boat number now are we? boat number 20 Emmett Murphy Jerry Smith jr. Smitty Howe senior how'd it go today it was good. Uh, the morning was a little bit rough, but uh, we started moving in shallow and hitting them pretty good along the uh, boat docks, uh, just pitching. You guys have a limit? Uh, one short. One short. So seven fish? One small mouth. Seven yeah. fish, one small mouth. Okay. Again, there's a couple guys that have been fishing shallow already, so 
there's definitely something to be had. Like we know that Eric Mark spent some time fishing shallow. Who caught the smallmouth? I did. You did. How come I need to ask you that? I know. <laughs> he always comes through with something good, man. He always does. Seven fish. Seven fish. Okay. 11.41 pounds. All right. Thank you much. Ooh. 26. Don, Dick, Zach, Chaff, and boat number 26. This looks like a pretty good bag. Yeah. Oh, that four six was your lunker. This might. This might be a. I don't think you got to sweat it, but maybe longer. <laughs> you pick it, All right. Okay. Three, six, three. Well, that one looks almost better. Maybe not. Solid. No, we'll just let them go through. That's a couple solid ones there, Don, but you have to follow up with some more of that size, I think, to run with these guys today. <laughs> Pretty good bag there. Oh, yeah. Well, you guys, you'll be a first time winner. How many times have you fished this tournament? So, uh, this is my second time. I haven't fished since 2018. Uh, I fished with Darren Eck. Uh, we took third, and uh, I was actually going to fish as a co, and then Eric Marsh said that he needed, you know, one more pro to jump in, and if I would mind switching. So, all right. Well, 15 nights. Oh, 19 nights. Well done, Don. Excellent job. Right, most years you would be right there. Yeah. That's all large, eight large miles. Yeah. So here you go, the guy's leading the tournament, was going to fish in, on the amateur side, and last minute, end up being on the pro side, and he's leading this thing. <laughs> so I think, Don, right now, you're in second. Well done, well done. Boat number two. Boat number two. Ryan McGonagall and Tyson Hunt. Longer. Eight large mouth. Eight large mouth. Ryan, you came in second last year, did you not? Yeah. Okay, what's eight large mouth today? Yeah. It's pretty good. Three, two, seven, and you have a pretty solid bag that you caught fish throughout the day? Yeah, that slowed down the afternoon a bit. Yeah, nothing. All the bigger ones came in the first half. Bigger ones in the first half of the yeah. day? Okay. Well, who has boat number two? Number two on our... I'm going to win a little something here because this was the number two. Your boat number two, you were number two last year. That's worth a little bit of a prize. No number two? Okay, somebody's coming down. Okay. Set, there you go. 17.50 pounds. And that's pretty darn good. Excellent job, Brian. Well done, guys. Well done. <laughs> Seventeen five. I believe right now that's unofficially. I'm thinking it's third, but I could be wrong. Where's the mesh? Uh-huh. And I just was told I'm correct. There wasn't one. There should have been one in it. Just like at home. Okay. There you go. I hope my wife didn't hear that. Okay. What do you got here? All large mouth? Yeah, one small mouth. Okay, you have a limit? Okay, one small. Yeah. One small mouth and seven large mouth boat number? Seventeen. Boat seventeen. Okay. Al, you you finished, you cast you came in fourth last year I believe did you not? Okay, but not as good this. Three four one for the lunker. One small mouth, seven large mouth. Yeah, you have a few little ones in there. The last two uh, half hours we never had a bite. Well, it kind of dried up on you, huh? You needed to have a couple there. Yeah, that's not gonna. I don't think you're end up in check weight this year, but it still looks like a pretty solid bag. Very lively fish. Well, jo well good job for the fish care. 14.96 pounds. Well done. Three pounds less than last year. And I believe this is boat 19 coming up here. Boat 19. Randy and Jay Parker. Jay's from Meadville Medical Center. And this is probably our furthest traveling person today to come here, your brother, to come fish the tournament. Where'd you come from? North Carolina. North Carolina. Well, you have some awesome fishing down there, man. That's for sure. Gosh, the, 
No clear water and grass like this. A lot of rock lakes, huh? Yeah, and mud. Okay. You have a what's? You have a limit, obviously. What's your split? A large mouth, small mouth. Seven large mouth, one small. Seven large mouth, one small mouth. I haven't seen the small one yet. Yeah, it's amazing. We call him. We call oh, him. So they're all <laughs> they may, okay, they're all large mouth. All large mouth. Okay. You guys got rid of that one. That's a pretty solid bag, man. You might, you might be a money bag right there. These are some really, really nice bags. Sixteen point five one pounds. Well, maybe fourth place right down lower, huh? Wow, there's a lot of good. You might just be on this. Hey, well done there, Jay. Yep, thank you. Boat number 10. Boat number 10. Chad Gregory and Corey Lynn, all largemouth. We got a limit? Okay. How'd you, again, man, there's just a lot of nice, solid bags today of fish. These guys caught some good fish, but just not good enough. Yeah, which one you want? It keeps looking better and better for you guys. But I will tell you, there's guys that didn't weigh in. Ben Lippians, he's won here four times. Scott Welker, he's won here multiple times. He hasn't weighed in yet. Steve Hughes, he's weighed in won multiple times. Corey won last year, so you're not out of it yet, but it keeps looking good. I know uh, the smallmouth were biting today. We just couldn't find the big ones. Uh, so I feel like somebody's going to have them. Okay, smallmouth are always a wild card here. What was our lunker? 310. 310, okay. And boat number? 10, okay. And what was our split largemouth, smallmouth? Eight largemouth. Eight largemouth, okay. There's, there's a lot of guys that have weighed in today who would be cashing checks most years, and it's just not going to happen. This nice bag. 17.46 pounds. There was a 17.50 too, so you guys fell just below somebody. But I think you still might be in check weight right now, so hopefully it holds. Good job. Okay, number 10. We have a who has boat or number 10 on their notepad? Come on down and we'll get you a few door prizes here. Number 10 on your notepad. Boat number 12. Boat number 12. Boat number 12, Greg Wasco. Greg loves to come in sixth place in the tournament. In fact, the last three years, he's always come in sixth place. The tournament pays down to fifth. So he's a little bit frustrated. Greg, are you going to do better than six? Oh. Nope. I either said we're going to do way better or way worse, and so it was way worse. Way worse, huh? Do you have a limit? 375 for Lunker. All large mouth? All large mouth, okay. There's some good fish, but you have a few weak ones in there that I think are going to hurt you. Most years you can get by with some good fish and get by with a few smaller ones. Today, that's not going to be the case. You're going to need eight good ones. So I think if you can break 17 and a half, you could break the jinx here. Let's see what you're going to be at. 17.95 pounds right now that has that, that's 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 going to be close we'll see what's going to be so unofficially that has us at him at third fourth fourth my last my gosh it is boat 18 brian weaver nick triola one fish one fish okay we're going to see how that goes so nick you, you're a member of Bassmasters of Crawford County. You've had some success this year, have you not? Fishing some of the club tournaments. That did it translate today? One fish, one six three. So it's not as good as some other days, but that happens. Yeah. Maybe for a long day, that's right. But hey, thanks for showing up. I'm, this guy's going to be fishing many years to come. Brian, thanks for showing up here. All right. Okay, so we get on to the next boat here. Boat number nine. Boat number nine. Ryan DeArmond, Bill Huff. Ryan, how's it going, bud? Yeah. Good, nice to see you. Okay. Whoa. Yeah. Again, some solid fish. Whew, I don't know. What about that one? How'd you catch them today? Uh, drop shot all day. Drop shot all day. Well, Ron, you, you might want to pick wisely. 
There's two that are close. There's two big ones. Which one you want to do? I went skinny. This one's fat. Okay. Four six four is longer. Four six four is longer. He is. Two that are going to be. Yeah. Okay. That's one. All right. Went with the fat one. This is going to be close. Now it up four. Four one eight. But you caught some good ones, you just not enough of them. Yeah, we caught those right in the last hour. We kind of just held up on a spot and got lucky, I guess. Some nice looking so fish. So how many smallmouths? One. One smallmouth. Okay, got a limit. One smallmouth. Good fish. Nice bag, nice bag. I don't know, I still like the longer one for a longer, but oh well. No, yeah. I don't think it would have I don't think it would have threatened. Good bag, good bag. 19.47 pounds. I don't even know where we're at. Everybody has good bags. This is crazy. Hey, well done. I mean, Ryan, I think that has to have you up there somewhere in there. Don't tell me I'm wrong again, right? That has to be up there somewhere. He's representing Channel Lock. Good, well done. We'll be talking to you later. Okay, who do we have next? A boat number 15. Mark Zeit. Here's, hey, this guy's won a couple times in the past, too. Whoops. Some of the big guns waited till the end here, Cody, so you, I would not rest easy yet. How'd it go, Mr. Zaitis? Well, we got them all. Standing today. Well done, well done, Ryan. Uh, I shot at Lunker. I think this is, well, I think Lunker might be. This is going to be close. 4.84 pounds. So that, that's, I think that's the new Lunker. That's new Lunker. Well, that part of it went, but you're still holding on to the lead right now. Man, you have some other good ones in there, too. Yep. Quick. Okay, let's, let's take a look at that one. That's the current lunker right now. Mr. Zaitis has won this, come in second quite a few times because some guy kept beating him. Don't mention that guy's name. <laughs> but anyways, uh, Man, you have a <laughs> you have a really good uh, a really good bag there. Cool. Man, a lot of guys are kept. It was a good day. It was a good day. Eighteen point nine four pounds. Whew. Okay, that's all large mouth. All large mouth. Mark doesn't catch small mouth on Connie. <laughs> well done, guys. Okay. Boat number five. Boat number five. This guy is no stranger to the victory circle here how's it go today it was tough for us we struggled we got small limit small limit how many small moth you have in there all large mouth all large mouth okay just flipping bites or what we actually had to draw i had to flip a drop shot <laughs> so it was kind of a tough one for you guys sunday they were eating i was here sunday man they were chomping i thought we was going to eat them get them you know well, some days like still, I mean, still not a bad bag. You know, like most years, I know these these are solid. Fifteen point seven five pounds. Still not a bad bag. Well done. Well done. Boat number twenty-five. Boat number twenty-five. Rick Noel, Tom Dales, and how'd it go for you guys today? Went all right. We got our limit. Okay, we got a limit. Hey, by the way, um, we need to get somebody up here for uh. Steve Hughes was boat number Steve. Where were you at? Boat number five. If you have number five, come on up. We'll get you set up with the door prize. Come on up. Okay, I'm gonna give you a shirt. We'll give you a cup. And we'll get you some frenzy baits there too. A friend of mine and Scott Welkers makes those baits. Greg Gutierrez is out in California. Okay. Sixteen point eight seven pounds for what boat number? Twenty-five. Boat number twenty-five. Well done. There's some really, really nice bags. Wait till you see this one. The boat number one. Boat number one. Last year's pre. All large mouth. 
to last year's winner. Oh boy. Oh boy, holy crap. Cody, bro. Sorry, bro. Corey. Is this your bag? Man, that is a heck of a good bag right there. Wow. Treble hooks in the last night. Okay. Looks like we might have another lunker coming here. 5.13 pounds. So we got a new lunker. Well done. Corey had lunker last year with five pounds even, so he's 0.13 pounds better. That's your weak one, Corey. I know. Alan, Phil, Phil caught the lunker. Phil caught the lunker, huh? Yeah. Wow. Robbie's saying 27 to 28. Corey's going to go back to back, it looks like. You need help lifting that? Well, this, sorry, bro. It was a nice ride, but man, it's over. Thirty point four six pounds. Wow. Really good. <coughs> wow. Well done. Dang. Corey, excellent. Yeah, I don't know. That's pretty darn stout. That's really good. That's a, that is good. That's very good. No, those are all large mouths. All large mouths. Okay. Boat number 22. Boat number 22. Jim Miski. Jim, I got a little something for you. Oh, Corey, don't dump those fish. Corey, do not dump. Don't dump them. Okay, so we've got Jim Miski. Jim, you are the winner of the 2020 raffle from this morning. So you get the channel lock toll set. So you already win no matter what. There you go. You're a winner of something. You got a limit? We do. We have eight, so... All large mouth? All large mouth. There you go. All large mouth, okay. It's a solid looking bag, no doubt about it. Boat number, with boat number 22, okay. 14.90 pounds. Good solid bag. Can't complain about those bags. Those are some really big ones today. Okay, boat number four, Scott Welker. Okay, Scott, you don't have uh, 31 pounds, do you? Ounces or pounds? We're like, yeah, pounds, exactly. Yeah, no, no, nowhere near. Yeah, he did. So this is boat number four, Scott Welker and Jeremy Lee. Who has number four? Who has number four? Scott's won this thing multiple times. Come on up and get yourself something. All right. We're going to give you a, a t-shirt and a United Way cop there. There you go. How'd you catch them then? Uh, same as always, you know, finessing them. Uh, but just uh, hats off to what a day, Corey. I mean, that's, that's an incredible day of fishing. That is very impressive. Okay, so how many times have you been on twice, right? I have, yeah. So you're two-time winner. So now Corey's tied with you. So, okay. Because I think this is, I don't know if anybody's going to beat Corey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is, this is a, we're going to see, it looks like you have a pretty good bag here though. Yeah. <laughs> 16.44 pounds. Hey man, still a good bag, solid bag, most is well done. Um, Four-time winner, Ben Lippiets at boat number 11. How'd it go, Ben? It was good. Fish were biting pretty good today. You know, we, we did okay, not like Corey. Uh, but, you know, we, we lost a couple, so that's gonna, gonna hurt us. Three. Well, we got... All large mouth? No, there's some three, small mouth in there. Three small mouth. <laughs> three small mouth, boat number 11. Three, so it's three small mouth, five large mouth. Yeah, that's a solid bag, but it's not It's not going to be 30. I don't think it's going to be 26 even. No. no. Your record is broken, by the way, Ben. You did have the heaviest winning weight ever on United. 390 for Lonker. You did have the 
record for the heaviest winning bet weight. That's that's been beat twice already today. It's made to be broken, I guess. Yes, they are. Not a bad bag, though. Not a bad bag. Ben is a four-time winner of the United Way event here. He tied with the most wins ever at the United Way. I don't think it's going to happen today, though. But <laughs> You're over 20. Maybe 20.03 pounds. That is a really good bag. Well done, well done. I think that's going to probably put you in the money, if nothing else. 20.03. Nice job, Ben. Okay, so boat number. Boat 23. Boat 23. Mark Hughes and John Byer. Three fish. So, go to three fish. so whoever had boat number 11, come on down. We're going to uh, give you a little prize for Ben Lippiat's weight there. Five point zero seven pounds. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna give you we're gonna give you two shirts, and hold on, we'll give you the cooler there, and here's a frisbee too. Here you go. All right. Well, boat number six. Boat number six. Hold hold on, we gotta get Mark. What's what's Mark's weight? Yes, total. Three fish. Sorry about that. Large mouth. All large mouth. Yep. So we go to Eric Marsh, boat number six. This for your lunker? Yeah. Ooh. That has an outside chance. Is that over five, Eric? No, Eric says no. So Corey's. I didn't weigh it, so. Nope. 4.66 pounds for lunker for Eric Marsh in boat number six. Eric was fishing with Larry Wasson today. Well, there's a skinny one. Yeah. We lost the uh, the coat. We, we couldn't go all the little out. And blew it today. Again, a, a very nice bag, Eric. It's, it's a sol bag. solid bag. Step on up here. Eight large mouths. Twenty point zero seven pounds, Eric. If nothing else, you just edged out Ben for, I believe, might be a position. I don't know what that will be. So, twenty point zero seven. You did just enough. As as well, as long as you beat Ben, that's right. Hey, you've won this before too, haven't you? Yes, you have. So, now thirty. Nobody's done that. That's crazy weight right there. Yeah. There were some years when this limit would be pretty good. Yeah. I remember missing the 13 times. I remember winning with, not winning, but getting third or something. First number four. Oh, wait. We're going to do one more. Boat number three. Boat number three, our tournament director, Robin. 10.92 pounds. Just to make it official, Rob, I'm going to get his fish weighed in. Okay, now that, I think that's going to wrap it up for us, right, Wade? Yes. Okay, so again, we have a couple minutes before we get all these results tallied. If anybody wants to come up and get involved in some of the drawings over here, please feel free to do so. I'm going to just take a few minutes to break things down, and while we're doing this, um, I just want to say, again, a special thank you to our sponsors, Channel Lock, Armstrong, Community Chevrolet, Meadville Medical Center, RLG Construction, Bay Shore Homes, Northwestern Rural Electric, Accutech, Ernst Seeds, Meadville Forge, um, the movies at Meadville, Penco, Erie Bank, VFW Post 2006, and Palmero Toyota. And I want to also give a quick mention out to anybody. If nobody's been to Tamarack Lake fishing lately. That lake is absolutely on fire right now. You need to get out there. And Mark Zaitis is giving me the kill it. Um, it's just. <laughs> It's, it's, it's absolutely amazing right now. Get out to Tamarack Lake and get fishing there if you don't go anywhere else. Okay. Okay, so we've had 
with 28 teams. I'm just getting this in. 28 teams weighed 188 bass for a total weight of 400 almost 410 pounds of bass. That is staggering. Right, just an awesome, awesome uh, tally for today. I mean, just staggering. I've never seen anything like this in the United Way event. That's just a lot of fish. Uh, you know, and again, these guys spent so much time and effort to try to keep, I don't think we weighed dead fish. It's been years since we've weighed a dead fish. These guys try so hard to keep all their fish alive um, through the use of ice and a water additive to help keep them alive, keeping the live wells oxygenated. Uh, Corey with his big bag, I see him working over there diligently trying to keep some fish alive. He's wading in the water, moving the fish back and forth just to try to keep them alive and healthy so they can live and be caught again another day. So I'm going to get this started. We're going to go from five to one, and we'll sprinkle Lunker in there in between at some point. So I believe in the fifth place, and this is Don, is Don Dick, and this is his first time cashing a check at the United Way tournament. So this is boat number 26, Don Dick and Zach Chaffin. Uh, eight largemouth for a total weight of 19.97 pounds. Well done. I told you to get in there. Well done. And at least Greg's, uh, Greg Waska didn't come in sixth. I don't know if that makes him happy or not, but... <laughs> so I... He's seventh, that's right. I'm let them get their photos. Thank you. Oh. Oh. You're right. Okay, in fourth place, uh, boat number 11, four-time champ and perennial check casher at the United Way Tournament, Ben Lippiets and his partner Grant Wardian with 20.03 pounds. Good job, well done, well done. Brett, ben just makes a habit of cashing checks in local tournaments. I don't know if he knows what it doesn't feel like anymore, okay. Again, Ben had 20.03 pounds and just barely edging Ben out and taking over third place by four one hundredths of a pound is boat number six, team of Eric Marsh, who's a previous winner, and his partner Larry Wasson with 20.07 pounds. Eric, come on down. Larry, come on down. Well done. Well done. Well done. Hey, Larry, well done. Good job, good job. I think they're going to want a group picture for all the, the winners so that we could also stick together and they can get a big group picture of all the guys that have won. In, in second place with what was the heaviest winning weight ever for most of the tournament and their first time uh, cashing a check in this tournament. Oh no, you did. You came in third. Cody Amadean and John Hilson with 25.83 pounds. Very well done. I Man, Cody, that is so impressive. Well done. Well done. And this has just been an amazing tournament. Some really big fish. Uh, Cody. And John, I don't know how they didn't win, but that was a spectacular job they did today. Okay, and we're going to come on to first place and Lunker. Went to the repeat champions who also had first place and Lunker last year. Uh, boat number one team of Corey McClellahan and Phil Pasilla with an impressive 30.46 pounds. Obviously a, a record winning weight and also a big fish of 5.13 pounds. Corey and Phil, come on up. There you go. Man. Ah, awesome job. Well done. Awesome job. Well done. Well done. I believe it's only the third team to ever repeat as champions. I think I've done it in the past, Ben has done it in the past, now we have our third group of repeat champions and Corey and Phil. And when I say I, I mean with John DeArmond also, who was my partner. Okay, well done guys.
Guys, this I mean, is going to be a long time before this record is ever broken as far as overall weight. That's a very impressive, 30.46 pounds. And again, all the winners, if you could stick together for a photo at the end. And, to, and again, we can't, you know, we, we can't do this without the sponsors. I mean, I don't know how many times to say thank you or how many other ways to say it to Channel Walk for everything they do to make this go off and the support for 20 years. Um, they supported me both personally and they supported the sport we all love so much. Uh, you just can't say much, enough thank yous for all the support they give us in this event. Um, Armstrong Cable, Community Chevrolet, Meadville Medical Center, uh, RLG Construction, Bayshore Homes, Northwestern Rural Electric, Accutech Precision Aerospace, Ernst Seeds, Meadville Forge, The Movies at Meadville, Penco, Erie Bank, VFW Post 2006, and Palmero Toyota. Thanks to all our sponsors. Please get out and support them. And by all means, get to Tamarack Lake and go fishing. It's too good not to go there and fish. Thank you all for coming out. Uh, it was an awesome tournament, the best it's ever been. I can honestly say that. Hopefully we'll see you all again next year and it'll be even better than this year. Thank you, have a good day. Good job. Well done. Well done.